Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, and I've got two ladies making me crack up. What are you, comedians in your spare time? You can cook, I know that, but are you comedians? Brooke and Shirley, so you two are battling it out on Top Chef. I love this whole old blood versus new blood, but of course old blood won out because it's so much easier when you've been on a show. Wait, am I, is my high energy making you laugh? Tell the no, truth. Is that what it is? You old said blood. old blood. That's why we're like, <laughs> why are you calling us old blood? Have you seen the press notes? That's what it is. Old blood versus what? new blood. It's not veteran yeah. versus rookies anymore. Whatever. It means <laughs> I've been on the show versus I haven't Surely. been on the show. <laughs> Surely, it's too early. Like... We might need a drink. I might need like a, a, a limoncello or something to get going. You like that? Yeah, I like that. Who wins? Can you just tell me like I'm sure, you really forget the know? I forget the interview. I just want to know who wins. You really have to tune in tomorrow 9 p.m. at Bravo TV to find out. You've who got won. that plug. Oh. You've got that plug down already. Yeah, it's called it's called um, signing our lives away. Yep. <laughs> really so these works. waivers are true. Like I've read people in Survivor and The Bachelor. I mean, it, this whole like I've got to give you ten million dollar thing is completely true, isn't it? I mean, it makes telling you the answer to your question much less attractive. Yes. <laughs> I've always wondered, if you know you're the runner-up, though, does it make it difficult like to be sitting with me knowing that you may have been the runner-up? I always think, is that more well, difficult? One of us is going to be the runner-up. There's definitely no co <laughs> Can you tell me there's co-winners? No. All right, so congrats. Maybe. That would be actually kind of cool. That would be cool. That would be so cool. Be that would be cool. Because yeah. yeah. you guys seem like friends, so everybody wins. I'm, you know, I've, I was thinking about when you're on a show like this, now you've been on it multiple times, what does it do? Because you're both owners. What does it do for your businesses, your exposure? Is it helpful? Um, definitely. Uh, especially, I mean, like the first time around, it was life changing. I'll be able to open my first restaurant. So second time around, um, I mean, I feel like re-inspired more than anything else because it's like a culinary vacation for us. We just focus on cook, don't have to do worry about anything, like no food costs, no rent, nothing. So it's great. Brooke, you've had a bunch of shows. I mean, you even had one on MTV. <laughs> she doesn't like to talk about it. <laughs> oh, really? I'm really fine with talking about it. Um, I'm hitting on all <laughs> cylinders right now. If, if this was top, sh if this was like the top chef of interviewing, I'd be eliminated in the first <laughs> round. <laughs> Pad would be like, "See Arthur." Next subject. <laughs> um, um, yeah, no, I've I've found that that competing and judging and it, it's a whole different creative outlet. It's very different from being in the restaurants, and um, it's something that I didn't know I would enjoy, um, but ended up having a lot of fun doing. So I kept doing it. <laughs> how, much, how much easier is it having gone? through because it's so easy when we watch you guys on television but I've always thought I mean if you're there on the spot it's got to be insane having gone through it how much easier is it the second or third time around well I think you just mentally a little bit a lot more prepared to know how to sort of be ready for your nervousness and then don't get freak out and then like, you can calm yourself down a lot easier the second time around I wanted to say so yeah I think there's no actual way to prepare for yeah. Top Chef um, it's it's a mental game it's um, but in terms of like people are like how did you practice how did you kind of gear up um, I think if you don't have that knowledge of food and technique to begin with um, you're pretty much screwed yeah. <laughs> so it's not um, something where like you're so you the, can't it's train like for it. there's, you're, there's it's no not you're, it's for you're, you're, it. you're, you're, you're I I've, I've assumed it was something that you, because your skills are so innate at this point that you tune out what's really happening but you're still affected by outside conditions it sounds like I mean outside elements yeah, yeah. but I think that um, you know the pressure is is very real, real and that never goes away but I think having done it before makes makes it so that you kind of are able you to transform to, that yeah. That Handle pressure that. and anxiety into kind of fun and mo motivation. Yeah. You got to cook for, I mean, the greatest culinary minds and talents on the planet. I was looking at the list and I'm like, everybody from Daniel Hum to Michael Samanov, who I know because I'm from Philadelphia. When you're cooking for these people, is there anyone you're just extra nervous being in front of? No, at that moment, really, that you cannot, you just cannot think about it. Like, you cannot think about who you're cooking for. You cannot be nervous. Just need to focus and focus on cooking. Because once you start thinking that your head going crazy, then all of a sudden everything just start falling apart. So mainly for me, I never think about who am I cooking for. I just yeah. focus what's in front of me and just do it. I think ultimately you have to just kind of make the best dish that you can possibly make, regardless of who you're making yep. it for. Charleston. 
I, one of my favorite towns on the planet, by the way. It's a culinary destination. People don't realize that. I mean, there's a ton of five, a ton of, you know, yeah. What, the conditions, how, how intense is it? How crazy is it? Does the location matter? You mean the city? Yes. I don't know that it does. I don't know. But I think f maybe it does. I think for me, like for you, maybe. Well, I mean, people always say, like, is it, is it, as stressful as it looks like on TV, I think it's even more stressful. Yes, uh, like when you're in the moment, it mm -hmm. is the most stressful thing that you could imagine. But I think that we cook; th that's what we do, and I think yeah. we probably feel most comfortable co when when, when we're, we're stressed. Um, <laughs> well, is that, well, your, no, is that your stress I, relief, I mean, cooking? No, yeah. I mean I think that the kitchen is where I feel the most com comfortable. Mm -hmm. So to be able to do that in a really high pressure situation, I think the fact that I'm cooking calms, calms me down. Me down. Yep. Um, but I don't know that the location of the city, it's really, it's really cool to see the history of the city. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that ultimately the, the location doesn't really matter. Because I feel like I did it twice and both locations all inspire me in different ways. So like it's cool, the, the historical and then the local cuisine, everything else is always inspirational. So, but everywhere is inspirational, yeah. it's something different. So I don't think it matters. You left Silicon Valley to yes. become a chef. Do you ever look back and think, man, I would have stayed in Silicon Valley? <laughs> um, tell the truth. <laughs> like invented the Uber or something? <laughs> right, tell the truth. Like the, the, when I first started cooking, there's definitely times that looking at my paycheck, because, you know, like it's very different. Like all of a sudden I've become a, making hourly as a line cook versus making a lot of money in Silicon Valley. Like I made this every 20 minutes in <laughs> Silicon Valley. Exactly. but. It's fulfilling. Like for me, working in Silicon Valley is more for my parents because uh, my dad is in the Silicon Valley. He owns semiconductor company. So that's sort of his dream for me to go into that field. But it was never mine. And then so to be able to come out and pursue my dream is is pretty unbelievable. So I um, definitely never reconsider to go back because this is my passion. This is what I love to do. Being restaurant owners, how difficult is it in today's day and age? I mean, I look around in New York and I know a ton of the restaurant owners in this city. It's hard. It's hard to survive. How hard is it for you guys in the real world? <laughs> I mean, I think that, that we as restaurant owners understand that most restaurants have a lifespan. And anything that we can do to prolong that lifespan um, is For worth benefit. doing. Yes. Um, so I think that in that sense, Top Chef has been phenom phenomenal just to to sort of Constantly show our face to you. yeah keeping to the market keeping us relevant yes. um keeping you know eyes on us is you know anything that we can do to to lower the chances of failure are are mm -hmm. wonderful You're like <laughs> i'll go wherever you need me to go yeah, i mean it's hard and, and we've you know I've put my entire life into this business and i don't know what i would do if i didn't have it yeah this is our livelihood this is our life now so any chance that we can do to improve to stay relevant then, then this is what we do going through these types of conditions does it make you a better chef when when you're done a competition like this do you walk away enhanced as a, in your craft yes 100 percent, definitely um especially i feel top show really helped me to sort of let me focus and then to truly find out who I am as a chef and then what do I cook, um, what I'm really truly passionate about. And um, so I fell it only to Top Chef because they really make you focus to really dig deep about who you are. So uh, a lot of times you act on your instance and then so it truly show who you are. When you go through a competition like this, you guys seem like you're actually really friends and you were telling me, and I know the chef community is a very tight knit community nationally, mm -hmm. but there's a lot on the line here. I mean, there's money, there's prestige, you're in food and wine. I mean, this is a big deal. Are you able to separate the friendship from the, I need to win this competition where like essentially enemies is the wrong word, but I need to beat, frenemies. beat we're frenemies. frenemies? How hard, no, you, how I, hard is that? Uh, I don't think it's difficult at all. I think we all understand that we we did this to win. You mm -hmm. know, I think we all sort of dive into this competition with the same ultimate goal, and we all understand that yeah. about each so other. So it's okay. And as long as we're not stepping on each other's toes and sabotaging, doing, sabotaging each other, that's that not. I'd be sabotage. I'd be sab like and we're I'm friends, sure but I'm. No. I'm I mean, in it to there, win it. And there, sure, there, there are, are people, people like, like you. that. <laughs> oh, like you. Wow. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. Wow. But, Backhand? But not us. Hand. But not I'm us. Not say, I'm not going to say we're friends with everyone we've ever, you know, worked with Talking on the show, um, but... But you, overall, we all have really, really we have respect for each other, mm -hmm. and I think that that comes off very um, genuinely. Yeah. Genuinely, the fan base for the show is enormous. I remember I've had again friends who have been on Top Chef, and in especially in smaller cities like in Philadelphia, in New York, it's a different world. There's or California or Cal, but. Like the fan base, do people come into your restaurant and like, oh my God, I want to meet Brooke or Shirley because I know you've been on Top Chef. Like, give me some great stories. I think a lot of my great stories always involve kids. So yeah. it's always the cutest, their little girl coming out. Like, for example, like uh, my old restaurant was in Orange County and then there'd be girls driving up from San Diego, like celebrating like 12 years old birthday and would bring me a gift. I mean, like- That's awesome. It's so sweet. So like this kind of like, a, like, I feel like if we can inspire little girls, it's yeah. one of the best thing ever. So that's always gets me. Got yeah, some I'd, good stories? I would say like half my fan base is probably 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> and um, and I, I also think it's really funny when you like go to a table because the table, I, I, I go to a table because they want to say hi or meet me. And um, it's the it's generally like the husband who wants a picture. <laughs> um, of course, of course he does. To be the, the woman wife. who's and, and then the woman takes the phone and says, "Okay, let me get a picture of the two of you." <laughs> and he's got the million dollar grin. It's like he's cheesing it up. Um, but yeah, the coolest the coolest is I think the kids who yeah. who you feel like you've actually inspired connected and inspired. connected with. Yeah. yeah. How about craziest, like, fan response? Like, the anti-crazy. Um, craziest? I mean, there's so much craziness. <laughs> Is it? Um, I mean, it's like, it's mind-boggling. You wouldn't think it, but it, people yeah, are crazy. They really think they know you really well. Yeah, that's hard because yeah. sometimes people walk up to you and say, like, Hey Brooke, oh my God, how are you? Like, and I feel like I maybe I do know you, and I yes. have to act like I know you because I'm. But you don't look at all familiar. <laughs> but they really feel like they know you, and they do. I mean, people get to know who we really are over the course of the season. It's it's a little bit odd. <laughs> you mentioned little kids, and I'm fascinated. There's other competitor shows where they deal with little kids cooking. I'm like, holy cow, these 12 year olds are busting out like five star meals. How difficult yeah. is that? It's Let me crazy. ask. That's like, crazy. I cannot imagine. I've people. judged a couple of those shows, yeah. and those kids know what they're doing. And, you know, these kids have grown up in a very different era than we grew up. Um, you know, there was not Social competition media. cooking really on TV when I was a kid. Um, yeah. but these kids are the generation who grew up watching Top, Top Chef. Mm -hmm. And um, it's. It's incredible what they can do. Yeah, and there's YouTube, and there's all sorts of, yeah, you just Google it, and the kids are, like, so talented. I started at such a young age. It blows my mind. Speaking of YouTube, how, with owning a restaurant, how vital is it to be able to manage social media? Does that help at all, or is it kind yes. of like just word of mouth and old school? It's a huge part. It's a huge part now. Social media is actually really important now. So you'll like It's be part of our job. You'll literally have to be on Facebook like, hey, we've got lobster ravioli. To, like, how does yeah. it all work? I mean, there's restaurant social media. And then um, there's our own social the, media. And I actually take a lot of pride in my Instagram specifically. Me I too. won't let anybody touch it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Like, yeah. um, I don't, because also I'm kind of different. Like, maybe a lot of times my grammar is not right. And I like but to. But it sounds like you. Yeah, right? exactly. You know? So you cannot find oh anybody God, I'm talking like you me. I'm following you both on Instagram. <laughs> you know what I mean? so I'm like, going to be a commenter. <laughs> I need to be like authentic, so I'm okay. I'm not ashamed of. Sometimes I made mistake on my English, but that's me. Yeah. So, so I can. I just. It's hard to find anybody else to do social media for you because yeah. you're just not coming off genuine, and then that's not right. Is it important to separate yourself from the product so to have your personality on social media? Because, and here's my question: Do people come into your restaurants because of you versus your food? Both. Both. I think definitely both. both. Yeah. And I think restaurant and social media is great for like showing off mm -hmm. a special or, or an event that's going on. Um, my personal social media is more just like a fun Lifestyle. reflection of my life. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, and I love sharing that. And I'm sometimes crude and blunt and sarcastic. And I think, you know, if you get that and appreciate it, then I hope to be entertaining. <laughs> Guys, congratulations. Since you won't tell me the winner, I'll tune in to your finale. Aww. But can't wait to see who wins. <laughs> All right, guys, make sure to check out the season finale of Top Chef. Season 14, right? Oh, yeah. my God. Season 14 finale of Top Chef on Bravo, 9 o'clock on Thursday.